Guardians listening. This is Deputy Commander Sloan requesting emergency support. Adventures, we got our first look at Season 21. And man, you guessed it, it's deep. No, 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 not that deep. Bungie teased the upcoming new season coming May 23rd. We got our first look at the new seasonal armor and a few hints of what's coming up next. But before we dive into that, let's look at the upcoming changes coming with Season 21. Vamanos. With the launch of Season of the Deep, we'll be getting three new aspects for Strand. And Bungie just couldn't, couldn't Strand waiting any longer to talk about it. So let's get started. Our goals with these aspects is to strengthen the existing strand kits and expand the gameplay options of each class. You'll be able to acquire these aspects as part of a new pursuit after visiting the Poke Pond and Neomona's Hall of Heroes. Let's get into it. With the introduction of strand, we were previously able to purchase our aspects by visiting the Poke Pond and Neomona, but looks like this time around, we may have to do something else to acquire the new aspects, this new pursuit. Aspects were purchasable for as little as 150 strand meditations and were pretty easy to come by as long as you were using the strand subclass. First up, the Hunter. Hunter Aspect, Threaded Spectre. Activate your class ability to leave behind a decoy woven from strand matter that draws the attention of nearby combatants. After taking significant damage or more combatants approach, a decoy detonates, dealing damage and releasing threadlings that seek out and attack nearby foes. Pesky Cabal Gunfire have you pinned down? Need a quick distraction to revive your teammate? Have you ever thought about what a bunch of threadlings in a trench coat looks like? The new threaded scepter aspect for the Hunter Threadrunner might be just what you're looking for. Why does that sound like an ad? When players activate their dodge, they leave behind a decoy woven from shrine matter that draws the attention of enemies on the battlefield. Enemies will shoot at the threaded scepter until it's destroyed or expires, giving the hunter and their fire team enough time to get to safety. When destroyed, the threaded scepter explodes into two threadlings. Threaded scepter gives hunters players access to threadling generation and a new way to control the battlefield. It'll be interesting to see how hunters implement this in their gameplay. I can see this being used in a couple of ways. One, it could be a great defense tool to get away when you're low on health or used to group up large enemies to set up your big shots. Additionally, you'll gain grenade energy for dealing damage via throttling generation. If I'm understanding correctly, the more damage you'll deal, the faster you'll generate your grenade, grenade energy and thus spam grenade abilities. Now for my Titans. Titan Aspic is called Flatchet Storm or Flatchet Storm. By sliding, activate your charged melee ability to leap into the air, knocking nearby targets away and dealing damage. While airborne, activate your charged melee again to launch a cluster of damaging, unraveling projectiles. Repeatedly activating melee will chain additional throws. If you played a strand time before, then you know we have up to three melee charges. I'm thinking it'll require a melee charge for every additional projectile thrown. Berserker Titans are known for their unbridled aggression. While sprinting headfirst into battle is often the best way to deploy Berserker abilities, we wanted to provide players with a tool that allows for more potency at range and gives Titans easier ways to unravel enemies. This is where Fletchet Storm comes into play. With Fletchet Storm, Berserkers have access to powerful new slide melee attack that quickly launches them up to the air and blasts away any nearby enemies. While still airborne, press the melee button again to fire a cluster of tracking projectiles that deal heavy damage and unravel enemies. Fletch's Storm provides a Berserker with ranged melee option while keeping with the spirit of their fast-paced gameplay. You'll now be able to fight from a distance, Fire tracking projectiles that will unravel enemies. When an unraveled target takes damage, it releases threadlings that target other nearby enemies, which should also unravel them and so on. A loop on unraveled enemies. No more tying people up, Titans. Warlock Aspect, The Wanderer. Tangles you throw attached to an enemies and detonate into a suspending burst. Threadling final blows create a tangle. Since the Warlock Broodweaver is a Strand Minion Master, it felt natural to explore additional ways the Broodweaver might weave life into the world around them. Enter the Wanderer, a sentient tangle woven from the Broodweaver's brilliance. When Warlocks equipped with this aspect pick up a tangle, they weave the tangle into the Wanderer, 
When thrown, the wanderer travels through the air, seeking targets. Once it finds a target, it soars towards them, latches on, and explodes into a suspending detonation that deals damage and suspends any nearby enemies. To round up the gameplay loop, the wanderer also enables threatening final blows from any source to generate a tangle. I'm Jelly. Possibly an infinite amount of tangles that would suspend enemies upon enemies. Titans, no longer the suspend kings. I'm curious to see what shape the tangle weaves into once it becomes the wanderer. Cool name too. The Wanderer gives Broodweavers another way to upgrade their tangles and grant access to suspend effect without needing a shackle grenade. We're pretty excited to see these new shrine aspects in the game and we hope you enjoy them when Season 21 launches. We'll be monitoring their performance across the game and we will continue to balance them over time. And now we couldn't have more of a green light that we're heading back to Titan. Sloan has contacted us. Sloan has been MIA for some time now. With the disappearance of Titan, we've speculated on how she may have survived. Was it some kind of new suit, as hinted in the lore? Or maybe she is now a Taken, or maybe she has some kind of Taken armor. Anyways, I'm excited for what's to come. If you know me, you know I hate underwater creatures, and I'm really going to hate going into the water. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. What will we be facing in Titan? Stasis, Strand, and Light subclasses get their glow-ups for Season 21. Now, this article touches on some changes they previously mentioned in the Ability Attunement article, but I won't get too much into that because that would be a whole other video. So here are some bullet points to remember are, number one, when activating a roaming super, you'll have up to 20% PVE damage resistance, making the supers more reliable and higher end content. Number two, which I hate the most, Titan shoulder bash abilities not cost melee energy. And also, increase Fragment Slot Allotment for the following aspects from 1 to 2. For the Hunter, we have Trapper's Ambush, Shatter Dive, Gunpowder Gamble. For Titan, we have Bastion and Juggernaut. And lastly, for Warlocks, we have Chaos Accelerant. If you want me to do a full breakdown of the Ability Attunement, please let me know in the comments below. For now, let's adventure forward. Money, yo. Economy changes in this economy? Wait. Let's talk about the in-game economy, shall we? We got a few things to go over, including changes to our power brand, crafting economy, exotic armor focusing, and even more. For the first time, we'll be not increasing the power bands in Destiny 2 in Season 21. Pretty much the pinnacle cap will remain at 1810. It will not change over the course of Season 21. If players hit the pinnacle cap during Season 20, they will remain at the pinnacle cap in Season 21. Personally, me, loving this, less time on the power grind, activities are more than likely to open up sooner in the season, and more time chasing the things I want. Speaking of things we want, with Season 21, Bungie's bringing exotic armor focusing. Exotic armor focusing and decryption, we touched on this in the past, but it's worth repeating regarding exotic armor focusing and decryption coming to Raul at the start of Season 21. Focusing options, standard decryption, allowing players to decrypt engrams for free. Players receive random drops from standard exotic engram loot pools, no additional cost, which is currently what we have. And then we have exotic focusing tier one. Focus an engram to receive a random roll of an exotic from the associated expansion. All these being different pools. Red war, the separated from exotic helms, arms, chest, legs. Forsaken, we have all the exotic armor in the Forsaken pool. Shadow Keep, Beyond Light, Witch Queen. Then we have Lightfall. Exotic armor focusing will be coming in a future season. Sounds like we won't have that with the launch of season 21. Requires ownership of associated expansion as well as previously acquired all armor pieces within the engram of your class. All for the whopping cost of one exotic engram, 30,000 glimmer, one ascended shard, and your first baby born. I can see Bungie lowering the cost of this one as it's an expensive gamble for very little chance of success. Now for exotic focusing tier two, focus specific exotic armor for high cost, requiring ownership of the associated expansion, as well as previously acquiring the piece of armor, just like tier one. It has a higher cost when exotic engram, 60,000 glimmer, 
three ascended shards and one exotic cipher. We have also taken a pass at the exotic armor stat packages, so your exotic should roll consistently higher stats and with more frequent individual stat spikes. Starting in season 21, you can expect the average stats to be in the mid 60s. I'd opt for the tier 2 exotic focusing, while 3 ascended shards is a little insane, I think it's worth the gamble if we're expected to average armor with stats in the mid 60s. I mean, how many of us are rocking low stat exotic armor just for the perk? Lastly, since we are not raising the pinnacle cap in season 21, the need for pinnacle legendary rewards has dropped significantly. To help make playing our evergreen ritual playlists more worthwhile, we are changing the rewards for the basic complete activities challenges to focus powerful exotic engrams. This gives most players 3 to 9 free, achievable, and terministic weekly exotic engrams ready for focusing. But yes, you will be losing some pinnacle drops, so reaching the pinnacle cap will be a bit slower for everyone. We are hoping the need for less pinnacle drops continues in future seasons, but we will be looking back at feedback and analytics, and we are ready to adjust as necessary. Again, I urge you, if you're still on the power grind for one of your characters, I highly recommend you get on board before Season 21 launches, as we'll have fewer resources for those pinnacle drops, but ultimately... I am in favor of the exotic engram rewards as that will let us focus more often to get the roles we want. Additionally, other sources of focusable exotic engrams are random drops. We have the season pass, the paid and the free tracks, six from paid, two free per season, vendor reputation tracks, one each reset after the first. You can expect additional focusable exotic engram sources in the future seasons. Now let's our sights on deep sight activation and other crafting changes on the deep sight activation and crafting economy changes. In season 21, we will be adding the ability to electively activate deep sight on weapon instances to obtain pattern progress. This capability will be accessible through a new mod slot in the weapon detail screen for legible weapons. To perform a deep sight activation on a weapon, you will need a new deep sight harmonizer currency. Non-raid weapons will cost one harmonizer, while raid weapons will acquire 15 spoils of conquest in addition to the one harmonizer cost. This deep sight harmonizer currency can be obtained from season pass rewards, three in the free ranks and another three in the paid. This will be the sole source of this currency for the initial rollout of the feature. Additionally, only one harmonizer can be stored in the inventory at any time. This currency does not stack. Not all weapon instances will be compatible with the deep sight activation. You will be prevented from activating deep sight for a weapon that already has its pattern unlocked. Weapons that previously had deep sight will be ineligible. You cannot activate deep sight on a weapon instance which had originally been acquired with deep sight, nor can you activate deep sight multiple times on a single weapon instance. Weapon instances purchased from raid vendors will be ineligible. However, weapons purchased from Xur and the gunsmith will support deep sight activation. The deep sight harmonizer currency will be locked pretty tight at launch, but hopefully they'll add more avenues for obtaining the currency than just a season pass. In the future, nonetheless, we'll have some guaranteed red borders that'll help us unlock weapon patterns even faster. We also have more reasons to visit, visit Xur and Banshee. Zer and Banshee's arsenals rotate weekly, so pop in and see if you can grab any weapons that are harder to obtain. It might be wise to save your harmonizers for these weapons instead of the seasonal ones, as the seasonal ones are usually easier to obtain. Crafting costs will also see a change in Season 21. Legendary Shards costs will be removed from all crafting opponents. Glimmer and Enchantment Chorus costs will remain untouched. Enhanced weapon costs are based on weapon masterwork cost and thus still require legendary shards as we are not yet modifying the weapon masterwork economy in season 21. All right, now for some quality of life updates that we think you'll enjoy. Coming in season 21, we have a number of quality of life updates we are excited to share with you. First up, let's take a look at raid triumphs. Over the last year, the Raid and Dungeon team has added triumphs to new raids and dungeons. Duality, Spire of the Watcher, and Root of Nightmares, which gave a boosted chance to receive the exotic weapon drop for that raid or dungeon once completed. In Season 21, we added a boosted triumph to Legacy content with randomly dropped exotic weapons to bring them up to our standard for raids and dungeons. 
We added them to existing triumphs and are retroactive, so you already have completed the triumphs, you immediately start getting a boost. Alright guys, here you'll see the breakdown of the triumphs and their respective rate boosts. To the left you have the Last Wish, followed by the Vault of Glass and Deepstone Triumph boosts. Finest Matter Weave and Rainmaker Deprecation as part of our ongoing efforts to simplify the economy of Destiny 2, it's time to say goodbye to the finest matter weave and rainmaker consumable items. Starting in Season 21, these items will no longer drop from any source in the game. In any instance where players would have received a finest matter weave, they will receive one enchantment core instead. And whenever players would have gotten a drop of rainmaker, they will earn 3000 glimmer. Furthermore, all existing instances of these items in players' inventories can be consumed to directly grant their associated materials. All existing instances of Finest Matter can be dismantled for one enchantment core each. All existing instances of Rainmaker can be dismantled for 3000 Glimmer. May I just say about freaking licking time. Stock up on your Rainmakers and Finest Matter weaves. We haven't made wide ranging updates to Vanguard bounties in a while, so we took a pass to make them friendlier. As for daily bounties, existing daily bounties requiring you to get a specific type of kill, grenade, headshot, or any special or heavy weapons now require twice as many kills to complete, but many can be done anywhere in the game, with increased progress in Vanguard Ops or Nightfalls. If you only plan on doing these in Vanguard activities, you should see no change in behavior. We also added a number of new bounties, killing elites, mini bosses, and champions, kills with elemental abilities with bonuses for killing with a subclass verb, complete two vanguard activities. Regarding repeatable bounties, all enemy type kill bounties, Hive, Vex, Taken, Cabal, Fallen, and Scorn have significantly increased requirements but can be advanced by killing any combatant in a vanguard activity, with significantly increased progress for killing the correct type of combatant. We have also added one new repeatable bounty, one for getting fire team kills in a vanguard activity. This is a pretty big change and a big time saver if done correctly. You can group up different bounties and complete this alongside a variety of different activities. And if you're looking to do this during your vanguard then you just complete them in the vanguard activity for that bonus progress, it should be a lot easier to complete your vanguard bounties from now on. Alright you pet lovers, our favorite pup is back, good boy protocol. Archie is returning in Season 21. Now that we found him a permanent home in the tower, we are reintroducing the Good Boy Protocol Stat Tracker and moving it to the Account Career category. Your previous progress from Season 19 will carry on over. And now for some real life currency changes. Important Season Pass info starting with Season 21. As our teams continue to invest in our crafting compelling seasonal experiences for the year of Lightfall, there's a heads up we wanted to give you guys regarding a small increase in the standalone Season Pass price. Beginning with the Season Pass of the Deep, here's what you can expect. Season Pass increase from 1000 silver to 1200 silver. Season pla Pass plus 10 ranks bundle goes from 2000 silver to 2200 silver there will be a new pricing for season passes in life falls a year for the following to maximize the rewards with each new season and we'll be evaluating new approaches to post launch content and the year of the final shape pricing will remain unchanged for the life all standard edition which includes access to the current live season at the time of the purchase and life all plus annual pass edition which includes access to seasons 20 to 23. If I'm not mistaken, this might be the first time a game is increasing their battle slash season pass. I've already purchased the annual pass, so I'm good this year. But let me know what you guys think about the change. Are you still buying? Does it matter? Let me know. All right, that wraps up our video. There's still a lot of juicy trial of Osiris changes, but that's a whole other video. As always, don't forget to like, comment on the upcoming changes, and subscribe to keep up to date. All right, adventures. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.